dear friends welcome to this electrical engineering knowledge sharing channel amp power system we have already completed four workshop today we are going to discuss a new workshop which is workshop 5 this workshop has been planned to be made due to the various request i have received from my various friends based on their request this workshop has been prepared in this workshop we are going to discuss the sizing of various electrical equipments which are present in a typical power system so when we are going to discuss the typical power system we will look into the power system starting from the generating station up to the consumer end and we will find out what are the various major electrical equipments living in that power system so based on that various equipments we will go one by one the sizing of those equipments so if we look at typical power system starting from generating stations how it is generating station is started with a generator then through the bus duct or cable it is coming to a transformer from the step of transformer it is going to a switch gear from the switch gear through the cable or overhead line it is going to another transformer maybe to distribution substation from here it is going to connected to various loads this may be motors this may be heaters heater load this may be lighting system this may be going to ups system these are the various type of equipments are connected so if we look in this way then we have a generator that is number one equipment then we have a major equipment transformer then we have a cables or overhead lines then we have another transformer then we have a motor we have a heaters we have a lighting system we have a ups system so these are the various type of equipment we have in the then we have a switch gears so we, when we are talking about the equipment sizing we can go one by one from the generating station first equipment is generator the second equipment is a transformer third equipment we can say is a motor fourth equipment we can say switch gear fifth equipment we can say ups system then sixth equipment we can say heaters seven system we can say cable system cable or overhead lines eight we have this uh, uh, ups system these are the various type of equipments we have in the power system so we will go one by one to discuss how to size this various equipment now today is a workshop 5 session 1 in this session we will discuss about the first equipment in the power system that is the generators so we will see how the generator is sized to cater for a particular duty now when we are going to discuss about the generator sizing before going into generator sizing we need to discuss about this generator rating now generator is a special type of piece of equipment which has a multiple rating depending on its application so based on the various type of application generator is used generator rating is mainly classified into the two category one is a short time rating category another is a long time rating category so if we go in this way we can divide the generator rating under two category one is a short time operation rating category short time operation that is one category second category is a long time operation category long time operation in the case of short time operation category it is divided into three different category one is called a standby rating a standby rating another is called emergency power rating emergency power rating eps power rating epr and third is a mission critical emergency service mission critical standby rating rating these are the three category of rating for the short time in case of long time rating there are mainly two rating one is called prime power rating prime power rating another is called your continuous 
continuous rating. These are the mainly five types of rating. Now, in case of short time rating, this three category, a standby rating is mainly used for the when the janitor is not required for running. This short time rating is applicable for the short time operation where the machine is not required to run for a longer time, where already there is another power supply available. In case of failure of the power supply, this janitor is required. In that type of application, we use the short time operating machine and that short time operating machine again that failure on the main power supply how this consumer or how the plant or the generator to be connected what is the type of that plant based on that it has a three different category one type of category is a standby category that is how in this case the generator should be shall not be run more than 500 hours if the operation short time operation requirement is 500 hours only within 500 hours then short time is in the case of a standby rating machine the rating operation time shall not be more than 500 hours in a year maximum 500 hours it will run in a year and the load on this generator the load which is to be connected that load is not a fixed load it is a varying load it could vary but not more than the name player rating but the load variation will be such that machine shall not be subjected to load factor more than 70 percent so more than 70 percent load factor machine will not be loaded if that is the condition and if the requirement is within 500 hours in that case a standby rating will be applicable so what is the load factor load factor we define is the total amount of energy over a time suppose in a month if you say over a month what is the load factor of the machine so over the month we will calculate how much kilowatt hour energy produced by the machine divided by machine maximum demand that is maximum kilowatt suppose a machine is a 100 kilowatt machine that is the name plate that means the maximum power it can give 100 kilowatt so that maximum kilowatt or maximum demand okay that kilowatt maximum or name plate rating maximum this into suppose it is at hours 30, 30 days so 30 into 24 these are the number of hours so the total kilowatt hour produced by the machine divided by machine maximum kilowatt into 13 to 24 this will be the load factor of the machine suppose give one example suppose a machine of 100 kilowatt rating so 100 kilowatt machine if you run for 30 maximum rating is 100 kilowatt so maximum demand is 100 kilowatt into 30 days into 24 hours these are the amount of maximum uh, energy it can produce and how much energy actually it has produced suppose it produce on an average over the period of this we can we find it is produced about 60 kilowatt average 60 into 30 into 24 this amount of energy is produced and it can produce maximum this amount in that case load factor this this cancel load factor is a 6 by 10 equal to 60 percent that means the machine has operated 60 percent load factor in this way we can calculate the load factor so in this figure it should not be more than 70 percent if that is the operation and requirement is maximum 500 hours and the machine will never be loaded more than is minimum play rating and it will be with a varying load in that case the machine will be termed as a standby rating okay now the second rating is called emergency power rating or emergency power service rating this emergency power service rating is a pretty very critical rating this type of service it is only for a very very emergency service in that case machine shall not operate more than 200 hours in a year 200 hours is the maximum operating time and all other condition is same like that machine shall not be loaded more than 70 percent and in this case standby rating you cannot overload the machine what are the maximum suppose 100 kilowatt machine you cannot more, load more than 100 kilowatt at any time and but if you load 100 kilowatt but that is only within the five percent of the total operation time but it is not recommended to run the machine on the name plate rating it should be always less than name plate rating and average load factor shall not be more than 70 percent in their case of emergency power supply rating in this case our eps rating it is the same way it will be done in that case also the machine shall not run more than 200 hours more than 200 hours in a year it will not run and it is not recommended to run the machine on the name rating it should be always less than name rating uh, but the average load factor will not be more than 70 percent of the um, uh, name rating so if that is the operation requirement then we go for the emergency power uh, standby rating 
Now, if the uh, if the generator is to be required for the mission critical system, mission critical system is what is the system? Like banking system. Banking system, if this power fail in the bank, then it is very critical because this total society, total people working with the bank or total people dealing with the bank now for nowadays or everything online, it will be great job. So that type of service or some data data center data center where the inter uh, software is working all the software uh, dcs esds fire and gas softwares all the cabinet everything is living in that type of application which is a mission critical system where uh, power supply failure is not acceptable at any time this type of application the equipment the generator which will be used that rating will be mission standby or mission 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 critical standby rating the mission critical standby rating in that case the machine will be uh, same way it will be standby rating but in that case machine will be running up to 500 hours it can run up to 500 hours and loading factor for the mission critical standby system generator the the role loading is allowed up to 85 percent loading is allowed and with this 85 percent loading it can run for its nameplate rating at the nameplate in suppose 100 kilowatt generator it can run for 100 kilowatt only 5% of its operation time. So if it is a 500 hours in a year, 5% means how much? 25 hours. 25 hours it is it is a, uh, it, it is advisable to run uh, at 100 maximum implemented Only 5% of the total operation time is allowed. So if this is the uh, if this this is that rating of the mission standby rating in the mission standby rating the run machine cannot be run more than 500 hours in a year and it can be load factor can be goes up to 85 percent and machine can be run on its maximum rating or its name plate rating for maximum five percent of its total operating time five percent of the total operating time means 500 hours is the total operating time five percent means 25 hours it can run okay the, in a year in a total year and uh, uh, another point is uh, this 25 hours it cannot be continuous it is only 5% of the year but every 12 hours you can load by 1 hour so this is the case of mission critical standby generator rating now if we go to the long term rating long term rating there are two long term rating one is called prime power rating long term rating one is a prime power rating and another is a continuous power rating now prime power rating application is applicable where the generators, the multi-base generators are connected, but the load is such that the load can vary, can vary, there is a varying load and that varying load can run for indefinite time. Okay, the, if that is the type of the, why the load is not fixed, load is can vary from 50 kilowatts, suppose a 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, 90%, this way load can vary. But the average load factor on the machine shall not be more than 70%. Varying load is there. Machine can run up to his name plate rating. Up to name plate rating, it can run okay, over the period, over the period of time. But again, like a mission standby rating, this prime power, if you run on the maximum name plate rating, that maximum name plate rating, it should not run. Uh, it can run uh, on the maximum over name plate rating, but with a, not continuously for certain time of the of the total operation period. But what, and it should not go over that. But at the same time, over a period of time, the load factor should not be more than 70%. And load can be varied and it will run over the indefinite time. And for this type of machine, overload is allowed over the name plate rating. If it is a 100 kilowatt machine, it can, it can run about 10% overload for one hour, for every 12 hours. Every 12 hours, you can run one hour overload by 10%. And in a year, it should not be more than 25 hours in a year. So that is allowed. If this is the requirement of the load, the while load can vary, but it should be run all over the year, never stop. And but the varying load average should be not more than 70 percent load factors. And overload is required sometimes. That overload can be limited within 10 percent for one hour every 12 hours, and in a year, more not more than 25 hours. If this is the type of load then uh, the load requirement then that type of application we use prime power rating of the generators okay now and this type of prime power generator one disadvantage if this type of generator cannot be parallel with the utility supply generator itself can be parallel each other suppose this is a three generator in a power plant they can run in parallel 
but this generator cannot be connected in parallel with the utility system that is not allowed for this prime power generator okay and next long time ge operation generator is called continuous generator this type of generator is used where there is a constant base load the load cannot vary load is constant there is no overload suppose there is a continuous 100 kilowatt load is there that load is never vary for this type of application where that is called constant load is called base load for this type of application this continuous rating generator continuous rating generator means the generator can be loaded up to its nameplate rating continuously without any and over the time but no overload is allowed and this type of generator can be parallel with the among themselves as well as with the utility but the load is fixed and it will be running for indefinite time except its maintenance or overall immortable time is required rest of the time machine can run with the base load continuously and there is no overloading allowed if this is the requirement in that case we can use a continuous rating generators these are the five rating of the generators what we say what is the standby rating another emergency uh, uh, power rating emergency power standby rating another is mission critical standby power rating these are the three short time rating there are two main power uh, continuous power two long time power rating one is a prime power rating another is a continuous power rating out of this we can see only the continuous power rating generators can be parallel with the utility and it can give that power supply continuously at the full nameplate rating over the period it needs if for indefinite time except its maintenance and overhauling time so these are the five type of generator rating with this rating and based on the load we have we need to cater we have to identify the right standby rating of the uh, right rating of the generator whether we go by standby rating or we'll get, we will whether we will go by short time rating or long time rating and based on that what type of short time rating or what type of long time rating is required that to be decided by the engineer who will be deciding the uh, sizing okay that is the first is a rating selection what type of rating required that will be decided based on the load now the next point is a once we decide the uh, type of rating required then we will go for the what will be the size of the generators you know we know the most of the time generators are sized in terms of kva or volt ampere kva or mva with the power factor most of the generators are generally rated at certain kva or mva whatever the kva or mva with a certain power factor generally we define by power factor 0.8 that is a cos phi of the that means load will be connected such that the load power factor will be 0 0.8 that means the generator need to cater power at 0 0.8 power factor to the unit that is this the operating limit of the generator is guided by this okay so this is one of the things most of the generators if we do not want this power factor if we need a another power factor then we have to define the power factor in that way because based on the power factor generator kbr active power and reactive power production capacity is different you know we have a generator capability curve before going to generator size we need to discuss these two points this is called generator capability curve we are running the over acceleration region this side we put megawatt or kilowatt we can say other way kilowatt and this side we put megawatt mvr or kvr whatever you put the way now if you see the generator capability curve then it will be like like this so this area we call excitation area over excitation area that is it is mvr you see and this side this area is called megawatt this is called megawatt megawatt area now you see here as you increase and this is the cutoff point this point is called the rated power factor of the machine so if it is a megawatt by mvr so if it is the power factor suppose this is a 0.8 power factor line if you increase the power factor then the line will be going like this way as you increase the power factor megawatt production will be increasing this curve will be like this huh? this megawatt megawatt will be increasing but the as you decrease the power factor you see gradually megawatt is reducing megabar is increasing so uh, as you give the various acceleration curve will be like this depending on the acceleration curve will be different so this way this is the capability curve of the generator so a generator suppose a 0.8 power factor generator you can load the generator up to this megawatt and you can get this amount of mbr if the generator is 0.9 power factor maybe you can get this amount of megawatt you can get megawatt more and the megabar will be less as you increasing the power factor megabar generation capacity is gradually reducing that means 
during the ordering of the generator you have to decide which power factor to be decided and this power factor will be come from the load side from the load we have to calculate the power factor and based on that power factor suppose a load has a 0.3 power factor in that case we cannot use the generator of 0.8 power because most of the generator if you run at 0.3 power factor it ampere capacity will be very high and megawatt capacity will be very less so this type of generator is very difficult to make so generator when you decide a generator size first point you have to need to see the load what type of load what is the power factor of the load what is the megawatt and ampere required to run the load according to the generator to be sized and this generator capable to be called to be consulted to decide whether the generator is getting overloaded or not suppose the generator we have ordered 0.8 load we have power factor and for that suppose this is the megawatt it can produce suppose x1 but i need the megawatt of this amount if i need the this amount of megawatt then this generator cannot provide that amount of ampere in that case it will be overloaded by this amount in that case we have to go higher size of generators so by cap consulting capability curve we can decide the exact generator sizing now to go into the generator sizing what are the first point we have to identify first the loads what are the loads and what are the type of load and what is the power factor of this load all these thing we have to calculate first and then once you calculate the various loads suppose i am uh, giving a typical example suppose there is a one is a load suppose our kilowatt load we are defining kilowatt we are dividing by p kvr or reactive load we are dividing by q and kva yeah kva we are dividing by s yes, these are the three symbol will be used active power will be using p reactive power q and kva or apparent power will be used by s yes, power factor is pf this is our symbol now suppose we have a load one load is a kilowatt we write down kilowatt kvr and your kva and this is a power factor suppose we have a load 1 the load 1 is a p1 kilowatt q1 kvr and kva is s1 power factor is a suppose p f1 this is one power factor this is one load second we have another load p2 kvr q2 kva s2 and this is a pf2 there is another third load active kilowatt p3 it is a q3 s3 and it is a pf3 suppose in this way suppose there is a total n number load so it is a pn it is a qn this is a sn and this is a pfn so if you sum this total summation of active power 1 equal to n 1 to n okay then it will be total power p this is the total power equal this is the load profile this is the one type of load this is the second type of load this is third type of load this is n type of load and the total kilowatt requirement is that the sum of q uh, how, how much q equal to summation of qi this equal to all this sum q1 q2 q3 and this is kvr equal to us total kvr is yes this equal to sum of si and this power factor we can average from this okay this is a total load of a system now when we get the total kilowatt total kvr and the total kva from this now we have to calculate the what is the generator size now suppose a from this figure we can see net power requirement is p net kva requirement is q and net kva equal to s now we know the generator capacity if we see generator capacity is g that is is a most of the generator is rated at 0.8 power factor we say 0.8 power factor if this is the generator g now we have to see which generator can cut a this amount of kilowatt this amount of kvr okay now we have seen this is a yes this is the kva of the machine kva requirement total kva requirement this is the total kilowatt requirement now if the generator is given in kva this is our g is the kva of the generator and it has a power factor is 0.8 then this generator at 0.8 power factor is how much pg it can produce pg when a generator active power production capacity how much that is we know kva power factor equal to we know how much p equal to p active power is equal to kva into power factor and reactive power is equal to kva into sin phi right this we know it now pg equal to the active power equal how much kva equal to g that is g into 0.8 this is the kilowatt it can produce and how much kva it can produce kva means q into g generator kva kvr capacity this is equal to how much that is equal to kva into sin phi cos phi is 0.8 sin phi equal to how much 0.6 so this is the kva it can produce that is kva means g g into 0.6 
Now we will check this P, the amount of active power it is producing, it can produce that is meeting this requirement if this P is less than PZ. What does it mean? That means the generator, the amount of power produced by the generator, this is capable to give this to give this uh, active power, then the generator active power sizing is alright. Now, now we will check the generator reactive power production capacity. Generator can produce QZ amount reactive power. So if the QZ is more than the required Q of the load Q, then Q is also catering for this. That means if you go to this uh, curve, so that is your curve. Now if this, this is a QZ. Now if this Q, load Q, suppose this is a QA load Q, if the load Q is over here, and generator can produce this, this amount, so load is scattered for, and this megawatt, generator can produce this amount of maximum megawatt it can produce, and generator is, and the load is required only this amount of megawatt, that means this is operating in this region, so this will be operating this region of the load, so it is within the car, so generator can cater for. So this way, we have to, so the, we have to calculate a particular generator capacity such that, it can cater for this active load as well as it can cater for the reactive load. So active load or load active reactive load from that you can and you know the SBA. Now from this SBA we can find out the average load power factor. How we calculate the generator capacity? We go in the reverse way. When we load the KVA we know power factor of the over because here we have given power factor is load power factor separate. Now when the total this amount of kilowatt and this amount KBR and this amount of KBA is drawing then what is the overall power factor? That overall power factor, we know power factor equal to how much? Power factor equal to kilowatt by KBA. So we know the now the total KBA, we know total kilowatt, we know the P by S. This is equal to total load PL, that is load power factor. From this power factor, now from this power, this is the power factor of the overall load. Now if this power factor, we can see it is a 0.8 or more than 0.8. If it is a this power factor, this load power factor PFL, if it is more than generator power factor PG, power factor, generator power factor is defined 0.8, then we are in safe. But if it is less, if the load power factor is more than generator, less than uh, 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 generator power, uh, uh, rated power factor, then generator, because generator is not producing any power factor, generator power factor is decided by the load. But generator has the capability to give the 0.8 power factor load, it can cater minimum. But it can cater on a higher load. In the case of higher power factor load, generator will produce more power okay that is the only difference so if this load power factor more than generator 0.8 then this load kba is enough for the generator but if this load power factor less than this then from this we have to calculate a generator kilowatt in such a way it can cater this amount of kilowatt this amount of kbr so this way we will decide for this type of uh, uh, generator sizing i am giving one example then it will be more clear so how that is suppose we have a, i am giving a numerical example then it will be more clear how this generator sizing to be done for this type of load suppose we have a load of three load we have one load is a 50 kilowatt load okay another is a 25 kilowatt then another is a 50 kilowatt thus 50 kilowatt this load is suppose this is your uh, lighting load okay lighting load suppose this 25 kilowatt is your uh, ups load this 50 kilowatt may be heating load and then suppose 150 kilowatt we have a, a small small motor load i am going to say a small small motor huh? a small motor load so if you 50 kilowatt this load power factor suppose 0 0.95 lighting load 0.95 this power factor 0 0.9 heating load is 1 and motor power factor is and is a small motor power factor 0 0.8 okay so if you calculate the it is a kilowatt and this is a, then corresponding kbr if you calculate the kbr of this KBR will be how much? This KBR will be for 25, 50 kilowatt, 50 kilowatt load at 0.95 factor. Is KBR will be 16.5. Okay. Now 25 kilowatt load, a run on 0.94 factor. This KBR will be 12.2 KBR required for this 50 unit. It is a KBR is zero, no KBR because it is heating load unit power factor. So all is kilowatt. 150 kilowatt motor for running and 0.8 power factor is KBR will be 90 KBR because 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 90, 90 KBR. So this is the total KBR required and this is the total kilowatt. So total kilowatt how much? It is a 225 kilowatt. 250, uh, 50, 25, 20, 150, 150, 200, 275.
275 kilowatt. Here it is how much KVR equal to 169 KVR. Okay. Now if you see the KVA of this, KVA will be how much? This will give a KVA of your 52.5. This is a KVA, apparent power. This KVA how much? It will be 27.8. This equal to 50 KVA. And this will give you 318 KVA. Uh, 187. This will give 187 KVA. 150 kilowatt motor running on 0.8 power factor. It will give 187.5 KVA. Okay. So total KVA if you calculate it will come 318 kVA. So you see the load is like this. The load is a 275 kilowatt load and KVA equal 165 and 318 kVA. Now the power factor is varying. Now if you see the overall load power factor, then overall load power factor how much? Power factor overall load is equal to, we said kilowatt. Kilowatt means 275 divided by 318. If you calculate this overall power factor, it will be coming sometime something like 0.9 something like that 0.88 something figure like that okay now to size the generator for this so we have to find a generator which can cater for 275 kilowatt at the same time it can cater 169 kva now here as per the load kva 318 now 318 kilowatt if we consider 318 kilowatt generator okay now 318 kva generator if we consider now, if this generator, uh, you know the generator rating is always defined as 0.8 power factor. So, if we consider 0.8, so 318 into 0.8 equal to how much? 64, 4, uh, uh, 8, 8, 8, 64, 6, that is 14, uh, 1, uh, 14, 1, uh, 25. So, it will give 254, 254.5. That means 318 kilowatt generator, KVA generator, if I take, then it can produce active power, how much? At 0.8 power factor it can produce 8864 6 816 uh, 8, 8, 8, 8, 14, 14, 1, 8, 3, 20, 25, 254 but our requirement is 275 that means this is not catering for so this generator cannot give this required power so how can i calculate this required power we can calculate 275 this is the kilowatt required generator will be rated at 0.8 power factor so we divided by 0.8 this equal to you will give you 3 ht 24 3 for 32, 32, 3, 7. So about 350 kilowatt kVA, 350 kVA generator, this can cater for 275 kilowatt. And similarly, this 350 kVA, when I take it, now here you see the kVA equal to 169. Generator is rated for 0.8 power factor means uh, cos 5, sin 5 will be 0 0.6. So you put divided by 0 0.6, this is equal to how much? 6 to 12, 4, 49. 6848 uh, 261. Now our KVA requirement is 161. That means from this we can calculate if I go for this 169, uh, we need 281 KVA generator. From this point, we need 281 KVA. From the kilowatt point, we need 347. From the active power, we need 281. That means now out of this, which is higher, this is a higher. So I have to go by this. Because if I go by 281 KVA generator, then it cannot cater for the required kilowatt. And if I go by this required kilowatt, then the KVA coming 350, which can cater for this. So my generator size will be 350 KVA. That means two. Now we are going to discuss about the generator sizing for tangent loads. We will consider a motor starting business. Suppose we have a 150 kilowatt motor and running at running power factor 0.85 whose sign factor will be 0.53 charge a motor to be started on DOL in that case what will be the generator size it is dedicated generator for the motor purpose this generator should be suitable for motor continuous running as well as motor starting that is the that is our objective so if we consider 150 kilowatt motor at 0.85 power factor and this sign file 0.53 the motor KVA will be automatically 150 by 0.85, we calculate 1.75 KVA, motor KVA equal to 1.76.5 uh, into 0.53, this will come approximately 92 KVA, 92.5 KVA, this is the running requirement, this is the running kilowatt and this is the running KVA and this is the KVA. Now if we want to, uh, from the running point of view, what is the generator size that we can easily calculate? We can calculate the generator which can cater this, uh, this amount of KVA and which can cater 
this amount of k, k, k kilowatt. So if we consider this kilowatt, so automatically uh, if we consider generator as 0.8 power factor generator, then 150 kilowatt divided by 0.8, that is equal to how much? That will be coming about 230. Uh, the, we are considering only the running condition. In that case, this generator will be uh, for running purpose, this generator size how much? 150 divided by so this is equal to 1 and then 770, 8864, 667, about 187 kVA from the kilowatt point of view. And the, if you go kVR point of view, so 92.5 kVR, it will be divided by 0.8 power factor generator means it will sign by will be 0 0.6. This is equal to 616, 5630 uh, uh, 235 about 156 you can say 156 kBA. So if we want if we take a generator 156 kBA then it can cater the kBA but it will not end up to cater the kilowatt. But if we take 187 kilowatt kBA generator at 0.8 power factor then it will cater 150 kilowatt as well as this uh, this size is more than this size so it will cater this required kBA 92.5. So in that case 190 kBA generator at 0.8 power factor is enough to run the motor but this generator 190 kb generator is not fit for starting the motor that is the problem so for starting so the, the running duty is not the uh, string is not the critical duty in the case of the motor the generator sizing is dependent on the motor starting requirement that is more critical that we will see so now if we want to start the motor then the requirement is completely different now considering the starting requirement now a starting current of a motor we know it is not the running current a starting current it starts from 1.5 times to 1.1 1 .1 to 1.5 times and it can go up to six times of the motor full load current if you see the motor starting current characteristics with the time so this is a starting time this is the motor current so it starts from one suppose 1.5 it goes like this then it drop down so this is the full load current motor here started. So if this is suppose it is a 1.5 times of full load current, this is a 1 point, it is a 6 times of full load current. So if we consider this, the average current will be how much? The average current if you calculate, so if you consider this way, if you to calculate, suppose this is the full load current 100, 150%. So if you calculate the total area divided by time, so if you calculate this total area, divided by time this will give the average current so to calculate this area we can do this is a rectangle so this area how much it is a current is 1.5 1.5 into t plus now this area we can divide into two part this is one triangle roughly and this is another triangle so this triangle how much half into base suppose this time is t1 this time is t2 this time is t2 and this time is t1 t1 into in this area what is the height height is this amount so this is 6 times, 1.5 times is this, this is a 4.5 times, so 4.5 into I plus this area how much, this is similar half into T2 into 4.5 I, this is the height, this triangle area. So if you calculate this 1.5 T plus this will be equal to how much 4.5, half into 4.5 into I common, then it will be T1 plus T2, T1 plus T2 means T, so this is if you come common T. So this will be 1.5 plus it is 2.25, 2.25, yeah. And this divided by t is the average. If you take the average, then uh, this will be t. So this will be about 3.75. So you can say approximately four times is the average starting current of the motor. If we consider the average starting current of the motor full times, four times is the starting current. Four into i is the starting current of the motor approximately. And the power factor of the motor is also, we have considered running power factor is 0 0.6, right? 0 0.8, 85. 0 0.85 is the running power factor. But you know, when the motor starts, initial part of the motor, the current is fully reactive in nature because this motor, we, what is drawing from the circuit, from the line, this current will create a magnetic field in the rotor and rotor magnetic field will interact with the starter magnetic field and then the motor start to rotate. So initial phase of the current is a fully reactive in nature. And we know and the active current is very less. So as the reactive current is very high, in that case, what will happen? Power factor of the motor is very poor because we know power factor of the motor is depending on the kilowatt by kVA. Now, if the kVR kilowatt is less and kVR is more, the more, then the, it will be more reactive in nature. So power factor will be very poor. And once motor starts to rotate and then is speed is accelerated, then the reactive current will be gradually reduces or KBR will be reduces, active 
kilowatt will be increases. So initial phase of the motor power factor is very poor. It may be in the range of 0.2, but when it go to full speed, in that case power factor may go up to 0.6 at the no load condition of 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So if we take the average of these two, the average power factor of the motor during running, we can consider simply 0.4. So if we consider 0.4 power factor, that means the power factor of the motor is it also varied. It varied. Uh, like this, it is initially it may be 0 0.2 power factor, then it goes to 0 0.6 maybe here. So if we a starting point of the motor, we can take the average of this 0 0.6 and 0 0.2. It will be 0 0.4 is the average a starting power factor of the motor. If we consider this starting power factor of the motor is 0 0.4, and then it will be sine phi. This will be cos phi. Then a starting sine phi will be how much? This will be approximately 0 0.092. Will be a starting uh, sine phi. Okay, for reactive KVR. So in, in that case, how do we have to calculate? We have to calculate during the starting of the motor, how much kilowatt it is drawing from the system and how much KVR it is drawing from the system. That amount of kilowatt and KVR is to be catered for by the generator. So now how much kilowatt is starting kilowatt? That equal to, we know, root 3 into voltage into current into cos phi. Now here voltage will be how much? Because the, we have said about the full voltage starting, but you know, when motor gets started, taking during a drawing huge current, there is a Cable, there is a voltage drop in the cable, and we say in that case, motor terminal voltage will not be, though the Zander voltage is full voltage, but the motor voltage will not be full. Motor voltage will be reduces. So, generally, we allow the motor to start up to 80% of the voltage. We say in the specification, motor specification, we say motor shall be started at 80% of the terminal voltage. But here we are keeping some cushion, 5% cushion in my hand. So, we will consider the motor to be started at 85% of the rated voltage. That means during a starting of the motor, as how much motor kilowatt will be drawing? It will be drawing root 3 into voltage, terminal voltage into current. Now, terminal voltage will be how much? It will be 85% of the rated voltage. That means 0 0.85 into V. And the current, how much? Starting current will be, we have said, four times of the starting current. That is at the full voltage. But when the voltage drop, drop down, automatically motor starting current also proportionally will be reduced. So, motor starting current will be also 85% of the 4i into sin phi, how much the starting sin phi is a 0 0.92. So this will be this is equal how much root 3 into V into I. This is a starting KVA uh, root 3 into rated voltage rated current into it is a running voltage running current into root 3 is a rated condition. This into factor is coming a starting factor is coming 85 into 0 0.85 into 4 into 0 0.92. This is the factor is coming. So this is equal to how much we have calculated running is a 170 for 150 kilowatt motor. Start this running KVA 176.5. This into if you calculate this factor all together, this will become how much it will be coming? It will be coming approximately this all uh, all four three together. If you calculate the calculation, it will come approximately 8864 64 four. So it is a eight. Uh, okay, I let me calculate how much it is coming. 0.85 into it will be 85 huh? 0.85 into 0.85 into 4 this is coming 2.89 2.89 into 0.92 so this is the coming uh, kilowatt so this is a, if you calculate this 2. Point, uh, sorry this is not power factor no so this is not 0.92 this is equal to 0.4 into a starting power factor 0.4, no, we are calculating kilowatt, so it will be 0.4. So this will be 0. Point into 0. 0.4. So it will be coming how much? 2.89 into 0.4. So it is coming 1.15. So it is coming 176.5 into 1.15. So if you calculate in terms of uh, kilowatt, so this will be 150 into 1.15 divided by 0.85 so this is equal to 1.15 divided 0.85 this is coming up only 1.35 into running kilowatt so we can see from here during a starting motor is drawing the kilowatt about 130 percent of the rated kilowatt okay so this is the kilowatt requirement this is equal to how much this is equal to 176.5 176.5 into 1.15 this is coming 202 kilowatt 202 kilowatt 
I have observed a 204 kilowatt power it is drawing during a study and that is about 35 percent more than the rated power. So during a starting of the motor, the motor kilowatt will be this is equal to simply we can write down 204 kilowatt. This is equal to 135 percent of running kilowatt. Okay, so this is the running kilowatt. Now uh, a starting kilowatt of the motor. So during a starting time we can see it is not drawing huge current, huge kilowatt. It is only 35 percent extra power it is drawing during a starting. Now if we see the KVR, KVR how much it will be drawing from the line during a starting KVR? That is equal to same way root 3 into uh, voltage 0 0.85 B into 0 0.85 into 4 into I into sin pi. Sin pi is 0 0.92. So if you calculate this part, this will be coming approximately 469 kVR, which is equal to approximately 5 times of the rated kVR. Rated kVR how much? 93.5. We have said the rated KVR of the generator motor is 93.5. So during a starting, it is drawing about five times of the motor because 469 KVR, 469 KVR equal divided by 93. So it will coming about five times of the starting KVR. So this is the starting KVR. You see the starting KVR about five times. So during a starting of the motor, most of the power coming as a reactive power. So this generator is to be sized not based on the kilowatt but based on the kvr because that is a most critical duty so to cater for through 69 kvr kvr to the motor what will be the size of the generator now we can calculate same way from the kilowatt point of view we can calculate the generator kva and from the kvr point of view we can calculate the generator kva so from that which will be higher that will be our generator size so if you calculate kilowatt point so 204 kilowatt to cater this uh, if the generator is 0.8 power factor rating 0.8 this is equal to how much it will be coming approximately 300 and this will give you uh, this starting will give you 255 kVA generator okay but if you consider 469 kVA 469 kVA 0.8 power factor means it is 0.6 this will give you approximately 782 kVA so if we take this 255 kVA generator, it will cater 204 kilowatt, but it will not cater 469 kVA, uh, kVR. To cater this 469 kVR, we need a generator of 782 kVA generator. Okay, that means it is appeared from this uh, calculation, from this calculation, to start a 150 kilowatt motor. Okay, we need a, a start the motor. We need 782 kVA generator. 782 which is approximately five times of the uh, motor rating kilowatt rating but to run the motor we need only 200 200 kilowatt 200 kva generator now to cater 782 kva it is a very quite huge size because most of the time the power will be ideal so here we apply another rule and thumb rule the rule is as per iec iec allow because if you see the generator uh, capability curve we have already said this is your this side is a KVR, generator KVR, and this side is a generator kilowatt, and this is your operation curve. Okay, this point we call the generator rated power factor. It is a power factor is 0.8, and this side is a generator. Suppose this is a generator power factor 0.4. This is a generator power factor is 0.9. So this side generator, as the power factor increasing, automatically is a megawatt is increasing and megawatt is decreasing. So if we consider 0.8 power factor generator. So during a starting power factor only 0.4. So this operating line will be moving this way. So automatically it can produce more MVR, KVR. That the, at 0.8 power factor, we are considering this point. Okay. So this at this point, what is the KVR it can produce? This amount of KVR. And how much kilowatt? This amount of kilowatt. Okay. Based on that, we are considering 782 KVA. Now, if this generator operation during a starting, it will operating at a 0.84 power factor. So automatically this line will be shifted over here. When it is shifted over here, the automatically is KVR generation capacity is increased. You see here, but it is within the capability limit and kilowatt generation is reduced. In our, in our case, 782 KVA, we have seen our kilowatt requirement is less than, uh, very less. It is only 35% more than the rated. So rated point, suppose the rated kilowatt is only in this area. So it will be more than rated, but KVR, we need more. So here we can use this operation car. So, and as per IEC, it is said that 50% overloading of the generator is allowed for 30 seconds. So, if we 
because this motor will not be running every day or every hour you once it start the motor then motor will be running continually maybe two months three months or four months like that so once you start then then uh, it will be running so in that case occasionally if we size the generator in such a way that this overload can be taken care of the generator then we can occasionally we can overload the generator and 50 percent overloading is allowed for 30 second as per ic considering that aspects we can reduce the generator size and considering this capability curve we can reduce the generator size for 782 kba generator if we consider 50 percent overloading then it will be coming 175 divided by this this will give you approximately how much 170 to 782 kilo kba 782 divided 1.5 this is coming about 520 kba so 520 kba generator it can cater for this 150 kilo motor it can start so this kba generator at the rate of 0.8 power factor will be the size for the generator if we put another 10 percent margin then it will be about 600 kba generator is required okay this way we can calculate the starting uh, duty generator now if now third second third point is if the generator is uh, catered for continuous as well as such a motor starting suppose the, we have considered this now we have discussed to one continuous load we have discussed and we have considered one motor starting now a, consider a system where the generator is connected with all these loads okay where there is a continuous loads these are all our continuous load this is a your uh, we say it is a, your uh, a lighting load then this is your ups load huh? this is your uh, heater load yeah then we have a, a small small multiple small small motors are connected which is 150 kilowatt suppose and then we have a big motor of 150 kilowatt suppose this is system is like that and this is a single generator scattering coil if we consider for all these load what is the generator size then we can go back to the original calculation we have seen that continuous this amount fixed load how much it will be it was 275 kilowatt before because it is your 50 kilowatt this is 25 kilowatt heater load is 50 kilowatt motor is 150 and this is 150 big motor so all the, this is 275 150 200 275 is this continuous load and this is the motor load so to, if we consider in the this in this system then how much total kilowatt i have i have a 275 uh, continuous kilowatt plus i have a 150 kilowatt is a motor load so it is coming 425 kilowatt continuous load so this is one now this four to, this is a one 425 kilowatt continuous load and uh, to 425 kilowatt continuous load means how much it is equal to and the overall power factor of the how much it will be approximately 0.9 so this will give about 530 kva this is giving this 530 kva now if we give uh, this is a kilowatt now kvr how much we have seen that this force 275 kilowatt motor, loads running at it is average power factor of this we last time we can we in the previous continuous load we have seen 275 kilowatt load is reactive load is about 118 118.6 kvr and the motor how much for the motor running kvr is 92.5 92.5 this is equal to giving approximately 212 kvr so in the case of continuously running this loads we need 530 kb 425 kb kilowatt and we need 212 kvr so, so from the continuous point of view if you want to run this uh, machine in this way so how much it is required how much uh, kba machine is required 425 kg kilowatt if you want to produce by generator what will be the generator size considering now we are calculating this uh, mix load how much for running the mix load what is the generator size that will be 425 425 divided 0.8 that equal to how much 530 4, 530 kva so to run, to run this load 530 kva generator is required to get at this and if we go for the kvr then 212 212 divided by 0.6 so this is equal to how much this is equal to 353 from the kvr point of view you need 353 so that means if you want to run this total load continually you need a uh, from to cater for 212 kva you need a 353 kva generator this kvr and if you want to produce this kilo at 420 you need a 520 30 so out of the this is a higher so this if we consider this is the generator then it can cater the 425 kilowatt as well as it will cater this kvr requirement so for continuously running this uh, loads we need a generator of 530 kva 
with a 10% margin if we consider then it will be 600 kVA generator is required for this for running but when you, if we consider the starting requirement then this 600 kVA will not be enough because when you go for a starting then the starting kVA requirement will be high so 600 kVA generator which we consider that is a fit for this uh, continuous running but if we go to the starting business then what will happen during starting this 275 kilowatt will be remain running it is running over that the starting load will be coming now a starting 150 kilowatt motor when it go to a starts we have seen how much kilowatt is draw it draw about 204 kilowatt we have seen before about 135 percent of the continuous rating continuous rating is 150 kilowatt during a starting it draw about 35 percent more power so it is approximately 204 so total kilowatt how much it will be 480 kilowatt approximately it is required during a starting of the motor the total kilowatt required is 480 and how much kvr is required we have seen the continuous load this kvr equal to how much 118.5 and during a starting of this motor how much kvr we have calculated we have seen that kvr is equal to 300 and how much kvr was there that is equal to we have calculated the kvr before that kvr is equal to 469 kvr we have calculated during motor starting so if you want to start the motor in that case continuous this amount kvr is required and this is the starting kvr so if you calculate this thing total 587 kvr uh, i don't know either say uh, 7.5 587 suppose 587 kvr is required during 575 okay 587 587 kvr is required to start the motor starting the motor as well as running the continuous now if we consider this way now from this kilowatt point of view if we want to size the generator uh, running at 0.8 power factor then what will be the generator size the generator size will be this divided by 0.8 480 divided by 0.8 so how much it is it is 600 600 kva so in this case you need a 600 kVA generator 600 kVA generator if it run at 0.8 power factor it can give 480 kilowatt now if you consider 600 kVA generator running at 0.8 power factor so how much kVA it will be giving it will be giving kVA 600 by 0.6 that is equal to how much equal to uh, 600 kVA 600 kVA generator running at 0.8 power factor and how much kVA it will give it is 600 into 0.6 so is equal to 360 kVA but our requirement is 587 so this 600 kVA generator is not enough that means from the kilowatt point of view we cannot size the generator now we have to get to kVR now the kVR how much kVR is your 587 587 kVR if you want to produce by generator at 0.8 power factor 18 so sine 5 will be 0.6 so 0.6 you divide by 0.6 this is the kVR requirement and this is the power factor we know kVA equal to how much kVA equal to uh, kVR divided by sin phi right because kvr we know kvr formula kvr equal to root 3 into v into i into sin phi right the root 3 v into i minus kva kva into sin phi so that is the kvr so kvr means kva into sin phi now from this kva equal to how much kvr divided by sin phi so we are doing the same thing this is the kvr divided by sin phi this will give you the generator kva how much it is coming if you divide this thing it will be coming approximately 978 about 980 kva so uh, in the case of kilowatt if you go by the kilowatt wise it needs 600 kva generator but if you go by this way it lists 980 kva generator so it is quite big size out of 980 kva what will happen 980 kva out of 980 kva this uh, 118 uh, this total your Continuous load, how much continuous load was your 200 uh, out of 780 kVA, continuous load was uh, 275 kVA, 275 uh, kilowatt, 275 kilowatt, uh, kilowatt that how much kVA that is 275 divided 0.8, 343, 340 kVA is going for the continuous load, balance 600 and 40 kVA is required for the motor starting okay now we know that we can we have said already so this amount we have to maintain 340 kVA we have to maintain now this 640 kVA which is required we have said that during a starting of the motor only it will draw this current 
so we have said if we consider the 50 percent margin in the generator in that case this 640 we can reduce 640 divided by 1.5 that will be giving how much 640 divided 1.5 640 640 divided 1.5 this will give about 426 so this will give 425 kva so 425 kva plus 340 so if we consider this will be 765 KVA generator, it can cater this continual load as well as it can start the motor during running. So, in case of this total 480 kilowatt load, if we run the if we want to run and starts, we need approximately 765 KVA generator, 765 you now with a 10% margin, it will come about 825 or 800 KVA generator can do this job with a overloading, but that overloading with the allowed limit because with this overloading terminal voltage will not come down to 85 percent because this portion is fixed maybe come down about 90 percent so 90 percent voltage drop is allowed we will set the under voltage delay in that way so this way we can calculate the mixed type load as well as a starting load generator size so here we have to main, keep in mind another point when we are doing this exercise generator has another special tool it has which can maintain because concern is due to voltage drop it may happen due to voltage drop motor is not getting started but when this 85 percent voltage drop will be there immediately what will happen to the generator generator terminal voltage will also come down if the motor terminal voltage is 85 percent maybe generator terminal voltage is 90 percent now no generator has a very good control equipment called automatic voltage regulator it is sensing voltage from the generator terminal voltage and current the moment avr will see there is a voltage drop in the terminal immediately avr will increase the excitation to the generator to maintain the voltage so voltage will be maintained in this way and this uh, this response time of the AVR is only 5 cycle, I mean, 3 to 5 cycle, I means 60, it is only 20 millisecond cycle, 60 to 100 millisecond. With 100 to 60 to 100 millisecond, generator will bring up the voltage again to the terminal voltage. So it will be cycling while it will be doing and during motor starting, motor DOL even go for the motor DOL starting, a starting time about, it varies from 7 second to about 15 second depending on the motor size. So within the 7 seconds, generator voltage, generator voltage response time, EVR response time is 3 cycle, means 60 millisecond to 100 millisecond only. And we can uh, set the voltage window of the generator plus minus 20 percent. If we are setting, we can put the window plus minus 20 percent. So when the generator voltage come up to 20 percent, it will change the voltage, increase the acceleration. If the voltage goes up, it will reduce the acceleration and within the band, it can operate. And operating time is very less in response to the in comparison to the generator uh, motor starting time. So from this point, ABR will maintain the voltage, will try to maintain the generator terminal voltage, which will further help us to reduce the generator size. But from this, we can see that thing in roughly when you want to size a generator for the motor starting purpose, it is coming approximately 3 to 3.5 times of the motor running KVA. If the running KBA of the generator is, motor is X, so generator thumb rule, generator will be size will be 3 to 3.5 times of the running KBA. This is the, uh, this is the size of the generator. So if it is 100 KBA motor to be started at 0.8 power factor or 0.85 power factor, we need about 350 KBA generator at 0.85 power factor. That is the thumb rule. So uh, a starting part will be calculated in this way and the continuous part will be there. So this is the way we size the generator for the various type of load. So this is all about uh, generator sizing. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, next session we will try to uh, include or we will start with the transformer sizing. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.